Hey guys, thank you so much for tuning in once again. My name is Josh and this is my 79 Corvette. Today I'm gonna diagnose a problem that I encountered yesterday while I was driving it. So if you guys watched my video from yesterday, I turned the car on after maybe two or three weeks of the car sitting down. It's been extremely cold in Houston and it's been very rainy and I do not take the car out on the rain. I figured yesterday was a great day. It was very sunny, it was windy. So I figured I'd take it out for a spin. So while I was driving it, I uh, noticed that the fuel gauge was not reading correctly. So I pumped a little gas and it still wasn't. The situation is that the fuel gauge is showing completely full. I know for a fact that that's not accurate. <laughs> so I went and did, did a little research. I Googled a couple of things, YouTube, a couple of videos. Uh, came to the realization that it could be three things. One, it could be the gauge itself is out which highly unlikely because of what the input is. Two, the OHMS uh, wiring to the gauge is corroded, which means I would have to tear down the dash. Or three, it could be that the ground coming into the tank is corroded or disconnected or broken or whatever. So with that being said, I am going to go ahead and start from the easiest uh, part. I checked the fuses and they're all working. The other gauges are actually working aside from the clock, as you guys may know. But I'm gonna start from the back. I'm gonna start checking to see if the wiring to the actual tank is working properly. And if it's not, then that should be the problem. My next step would be just to go into the gauges and start tearing it up. <laughs> so if you guys are interested in watching this video, please stay tuned in that. Feel free to browse around my other videos. Please like and subscribe as it helps my channel. Thank you guys for watching. Alrighty guys. So once again, thank you guys so much for joining me. But first things first, I wanted to show you what I'm looking at as far as the gauges. So we have five gauges and the clock doesn't work. The rest of the gauges do work. The battery, temperature of the car and the oil press do work. Now the unleaded fuel gauge does not work. And as you guys can see, it's showing completely full, which in a perfect world would be amazing. But I know that's not the fact because I haven't filled up the car pretty much ever since I bought it. That's what I'm looking at right now. Now, as I've mentioned before, I have diagnosed the, the fuses. I've actually had this little neat oh this little tool really liked it uh it actually tests out your fuses to make sure that they're not blown so if it shows green that means it's working if it doesn't then that means that it's not working and it's not having any current which means your your fuse is blown i think this is a great tool to have in your car especially these older models or just in general with any car that you have now if i'm unable to figure out the wiring situation i am going to go ahead and remove the dash and see if the actual gauge is not working if there's a bad connection or might as well just replace all the gauges by a new set of gauges and just work with that just pretty much update the gauges these are old gauges this is a 40 almost 50 year old car so you can expect things to happen and obviously this is some of the problems that the car is going through now guys, I do have my tools ready and I am going to start by removing the lid or the cover. This should allow for the full top and cap to come out and then I can go further. And there should be four screws about this size. So nothing too crazy. There should be four of them and that should allow for the gas cap to come out. Not the gas cap, but the gas cover. Alrighty, so it's completely out. That's a lot of rust there. Might want to clean that up. I like to inspect some of these parts just to make sure that there's nothing wrong with them and they don't break in the future. So I might just take the screws off, clean it up, wash it off, and then put it back up before I put everything up. But this is the cover. Now, I don't know if you guys can tell, but this is not in its best shape. It's cracked here. There's a few cracks here. I'm assuming this is the original one. So I'm going to go ahead and try to remove it carefully so that way I don't break it any further or else I'm going to have to buy a new one. All right, let's see if I can do this carefully. Ah, this is all plastic for sure. Sorry, cracking on me. Before we continue, I do want to cover this so that way there's no dirt going into the actual gas tank and that way I can pry this out without having to worry about any dirt going into it. There is a little hose over here. You gotta remove that. That's just a drain plug. 
And as you guys can tell, mine pretty much just broke in a million pieces. So I may just have to buy a new one. But there is a drain plug that goes in here. And that allows for any excess gas that flows through this area to just go directly into the drain plug. That goes into the trash. And we're going to go ahead and shut this out. Alrighty guys, here's the inside of the gas cap in all its glory. We have your fit line, your return line, and your evaporator line over here. You do have six different bolts. That's if you wanted to replace the whole system and replace the floaties. But what I'm essentially worried about is this part right here. So this is the ground that goes into the gauge and it does seem to be very corroded and rusted. So that might be an issue. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and clean that up to make sure. I'm just gonna unplug it and plug it back in to see if there's anything any movement as far as inside the cabin goes and we're gonna continue testing it so i managed to remove the ground it's extremely rusted not just the actual terminal uh, let me see if i can get the camera to focus but yeah not just the terminal i mean this is this is definitely rusted so my next step is going to be to try to turn the car on and see if the gas gauge goes any down if it does then we know that the ground is the problem and we just have to clean it up fix it up and it'll be good to go and if not then well we'll we'll have to wait for the next video i have my keys my uh, loyal companion let's see hopefully it will go down oh yes okay so if you guys can see that the actual needle is actually moving which means there is a problem with the ground, which is really good news for me. Kind of stop there. I know I don't have that much gas. Regardless of it, it does show that the ground could be a problem and not the gauge. So this is good news. So let's crank the car up and let's test it out to make sure that I'm able to get some actual, some accurate readings. Now, before I start the car, I do want to take this off. Make sure there's no dirt in it. Put the gas cap on. I was very excited to go ahead and start cleaning the terminal for the ground to make sure that the gauge works properly. However, I don't have any sanding paper and I know there's other ways of doing this, but I prefer it my way. I like to sand things down to make sure that I know that it is completely flush and there's no corrosion anymore. I also, I was holding this, but <laughs> I also need to replace it because as you guys can tell, this thing just disintegrated as soon as I started removing it. I'm gonna have to just get a new one. This thing just looks, I mean, this thing looks really bad. So I'm just gonna get a new one, make sure I can clean a little bit of the surrounding area for the gas tank. And that should fix the issue guys. But so far everything's so good, the gauge is already back to normal. I don't have the ground connected, so hopefully that'll give me the same reading once I plug it in, once it's clean and everything. For the most part, I'm happy with my decision of kind of, you know, trying to do this DIY. I'll keep you guys posted on the next video. Once I take it on for a drive, I'll show you guys the gauges to make sure they all work. Real quick guys, I am actually looking online for the gas tank boot 
not only did I see a ton of different prices and top flight being the cheapest one, ironically, looking into the boot and I started looking at eBay has one for $20, Corvette parts has for $21, eBay has another one for $74, and then there's some for $29, $45, $34, outrageous prices. When it comes to these things, there's definitely a sort of pricing for the same exact boot. Ironically, Top Flight has the cheapest one, which I found that very strange, but it does have the cheapest one. I'd rather buy it from them before buying it from eBay. So do your research before buying parts for these cars as they do get subject to changing in pricing. You do not want to spend $45 for, I mean, look at this, $45 for a used one. That's ridiculous. Or $34 for something that you could be paying $19 at Eclairs. We'll order these ones, we'll order the connectors, and once get, they get delivered, I'll continue and I'll record a new video. Thank you guys for watching, like and subscribe, and if you have any questions or comments, please let me know, as I love hearing you guys, and it helps me grow the channel, not just that, but it also helps me make better at making videos. Thank you guys so much for watching, have a great one, bye.